Have you ever wondered which U.S. cities offer the best lifestyle for single men? Or maybe you're thinking about moving and want to know where you can really up your dating game? Well, if that's you, you'll want to tune into this week's episode. We're breaking down the top six cities in the United States for single men who are looking for adventure, opportunity, and of course, a vibrant dating scene. This episode is packed with insights and tips to help you decide where you might want to lay down roots. And I recently released another episode titled Top 7 Cities for Single Remote Workers to Boost Their Dating Life. And it got a lot of engagement and there was also a demand in the comments for a list of U.S. cities because these top 7 were international cities. So I decided to make this episode and I read every comment and respond so don't be shy to make suggestions. You're listening to the Inner Confidence Podcast, home to the social funnel method. My name is Robbie Kramer. I've been a coach since 2007, and I've helped over 1,300 digital nomads, expats, and remote workers build an amazing social and dating life abroad. My mission is simple, to help you position yourself to meet stunning women and make awesome friends en route to becoming the most confident and attractive version you can be. I have an intense hatred for fluff and useless advice that you can't take action on, so tune in each week to learn the most effective and implementable strategies to level up your game. So stick around, let's go. Before I dive into the list, let me explain the metrics on which I'll be grading these cities. So the first one is, is it good for meeting women during the day or day game, as they call it? Um, these are non-social environments where you're going about your day, like the dry cleaners or you know picking up stuff from the grocery store, you know, walking down the sidewalk, what have you. Uh, the second criteria is night game, and this includes festivals and social daytime activities. Um, so you know how good is the nightlife and social stuff in a city? The third is how is the city for the online dating opportunities? How is it for building a social circle? Uh, The fifth criteria is how strong is the local competition of men? And then the sixth is the cost of living in that city. And last but not least, the femininity of women in that city. So how feminine and beautiful the women are. And the places on this list are all places I've either lived or spent significant time in. And I'm talking about visiting many, many weeks or months at a time. And I also have members in my community in all of these places. And that should hopefully give you confidence in the credibility of this information. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I believe the ultimate way to meet women is by creating a high value social circle of cool guys and beautiful girls, exercising discipline and playing long game to succeed with the ones you really want. And I call this approach farming. And what I call what most guys are doing is hunting, right? They're hunting for women by using online dating. They're hunting for women using day game and night game, going out to the bars and clubs, They're also cold DMing girls on Instagram and other social media platforms instead of using Instagram in a much more effective way of kind of fostering a connection over time without looking thirsty, kind of playing the long game. Uh, Obviously, you can't farm unless you can also hunt, but the only way to consistently land really top-notch beautiful women if you're not a mega chad and insanely good looking is to build this social circle and to use Instagram to stay in touch with everyone in it. So remember, your job is to make as many friends as possible and be the glue that holds all of them together. And if you're already pretty confident in your dating abilities, but you're struggling to date the women you really want, using this social circle strategy is the way to achieve your goals, hands down. Uh, You know, if you're struggling to date at all, you need to learn to hunt better first, because you can't grow a social circle without knowing how to hunt. So I'll be, you know, factoring all those metrics into the rating and i will also rate the cities on a scale of one to five um in terms of all the things i mentioned low competition cost of living day game femininity women night game all those things and so we're going to go in reverse order and start with number six on the list number six is san diego california and san diego is known for its laid-back beach vibe perfect weather it's a great spot for single men i went to uc san diego from 2001 to 2006 for undergrad I also lived there for another two to three years after college before I moved to L.A. And uh, I also moved back and lived there between 2016 and 2018 when I wasn't splitting my time between New York City and Europe and back and forth between L.A. and San Diego as as well. It was really interesting how much easier (laughs) dating in San Diego got as I got older. Uh, I got to experience a single life from age 18 to 36 there. And I can't tell you how much this graph is true. Let me show you that graph here. And so here you've got age on the x-axis and axis on the y-axis. You know, um, 
please excuse the uh, the language in this graph. Female access to men versus male access to women by age. Uh, and you can see you've got the uh, zone that will remain nameless on the left and then the player zone on the right for guys. And then you have the marriage zone in the middle. And um, in my early 20s, I had to work really hard for everything. Right. And that's consistent on this list. You can see a guy in his early 20s. He's, he's got the access, you know, between four to five, if you're lucky, or three to five. And I lived in Pacific Beach and I would literally go to the bar six nights per week, either in Pacific Beach or downtown in the Gaslamp District. And I would approach like crazy and rarely did I get laid, you know, maybe once a month. Uh, once every two months. And I was approaching, like I said, like crazy, multiple approaches every day, probably approaching 25 girls at least per week. Uh, I was chubby, but I was young. So what I lacked in sexual market value, I made up with brute force. And when I moved back in 2016, and I didn't live in PB anymore, I live in Bankers Hill, which is a area closer to downtown. It was so much easier because I was in better shape. I had a lot more confidence. I understood networking and how to grow a social circle. And I fostered connections at some of the best venues and I had hot female friends so that made my life so much easier. Uh, and it just goes to show what a little bit of age can do. Cause you can see on this graph here, right? Once a guy gets into his early thirties, he's got some resources behind him, some wisdom. He starts to having the access of a woman in her early twenties when she's at her peak beauty. The joke about San Diego is they call it man Diego, but according to census data, San Diego is fairly balanced with a one-to-one -one ratio, though certain areas like PB and downtown may have more single women due to the coastal lifestyle and the hospitality sector. And the nickname, I think, came about due to the large population of military men. You know, Camp Pendleton is in Oceanside, just north of San Diego, um, and it's the largest Marine Corps base in the U.S. The Navy also has some bases in the county. And the military guys really come out in droves on the weekends, and they usually go downtown or PB, and uh, that is the area of the highest male thirst for sure. You know, the gas lamp district, these guys are rowdy. Um, and even though there are tons of bars and clubs down there, it's, it's not as easy as you would think to hunt, right? So in terms of day game, uh, I would give San Diego three out of five. It's a drive around city. So the only really consistent day game spots are close to the beach. Uh, some pedestrian areas like Garnett Street and Pacific Beach and Little Italy. You've got some people traffic in downtown, of course, during the workday. Um, and then obviously, you know, at night, but that we're getting into night game now. But you're not going to see a ton of really hot girls to make day game a reliable strategy. Uh, unless you have a lot of time to, you know, either post up in coffee shops in those areas and do that. So, you know, three out of five for day game. For night game, I'm going to give it four out of five. You got lots of bars. You got a good vibe for approaching. But for some really strange reason, they kick everyone out at the bars at like 1.15, even though the closing time in California is 2 a.m. Um, and they don't do this in other California cities, in my experience. Like, they don't kick people out at 1.15 in L.A. It's like right around 2. Um, so I still don't really get why. But if you're going to go out, make sure you go out early because everyone gets drunk and sloppy. The military dudes get real drunk and sloppy. They <laughs> uh, really, you know, get competitive around that like 1 a.m. last call. And you don't want to be waiting till then. For online dating, I'm going to give San Diego three out of five, right? The cute girls are quite active here. So they're way more likely to get plenty of dates through their social circles, which makes it, you know, a challenge. Um, it's difficult to do well unless your online dating game is top notch and you're also in really good shape. For social circle in San Diego, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of five. You know, it's a bit spread out. And the venues aren't really that intimate. So it's hard to meet the staff and grow your social circle through kind of identifying the key hotspots, which is the, the major way that a lot of guys do it. Uh, but it certainly can be done if you're willing to put in at least, you know, six months worth of effort. Uh, and you've got other ways to build that social circle, like through your, your shtick or through, you know, other extracurricular activities you have. You know, for if, if you want to understand how to build a social circle, I have lots of other episodes on that. Um, but like I said, that's, that's my bread and butter. And I think the strategy that everyone should be using once they're already doing okay. In terms of local competition, I'm gonna give San Diego a 3.5 out of five, right? There's plenty of fit, attractive men in San Diego, but it's way less competitive than LA. For cost of living, three out of five. It's expensive, but still cheaper than LA or San Francisco. And for the femininity of women, I'm going to give it four out of five. You know, the women in San Diego are beautiful. They're laid back, they're fitness focused. It's a great place for meeting fit, active and attractive women. 
Before we continue with the episode, if you're going out and getting numbers and want to improve your texting so more of those numbers convert to dates, check out my texting course. It will teach you the psychology of digital communication, which is surprisingly polar opposite in almost every way compared to live interactions. What works in person doesn't work in text, so this is almost always the area that men are making easily correctable mistakes that they're totally unconscious of. My course will optimize your texting, which is a skill you really need to master, and the best part is you can cut and paste your way to master. You can find the link in the description. It costs less than a round of drinks. And if you're going on dates and want to learn what to do so more of them end up in your bedroom, check out my free dating protocol. You'll learn to be an interesting guy to talk to, even if you're serious or over-analytical. How to help a girl open up on a date, why talking about sex is a big taboo on dates, if you want to get laid, and what to talk about instead, going from the first touch to the first kiss, how to invite her over to your place, and why you should skip 80% of the physical escalation moves you're doing back at your place. The link to this free guide is in the description. Out of all the guys I know, the only ones who manage to consistently land eights and up are the guys who have built a social circle. You can certainly approach women and use the apps to get laid, but those strategies simply don't really work on top tier women. Think about it. She's hot, she has hot friends, and hot girls get invited to high status events almost every single night. So when it comes time to get ready for your date, do you think she's gonna show up or flake last minute when her girlfriend texts her to come to some awesome thing? As if she's gonna choose the random dude on Hinge or the guy who chased her down on the street over her social circle. No chance. If you're getting tons of flakes, this is the reason. But for most guys, the idea of building a social circle, especially if you're traveling or in a new city, can feel overwhelming. So they continue to hunt for women in their usual ways and they end up settling for a girl they were never really that excited about in the first place. To avoid this fate, join our community of aspiring international playboys and instantly plug into a highly vetted social circle of cool dudes to network and navigate your journey with. You already know it's hard to find a wingman because the good ones don't really stay in the game very long. They get married, life goes on, right? Many of our members travel together, they end up living together, and they build amazing social circles in the best kept secret locations around the globe with gorgeous women and low cost of living. I'm extremely careful who I let into this community, but if you feel like you'd make a good fit, you can learn more about the social funnel method to consistently land top tier women and apply to join our community. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the show. Number five on the list is Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'll include Phoenix as the local, you know, metro area around Scottsdale. And Scottsdale has really become a top spot for single guys with an influx of young professionals and great weather year round. I spent lots of time over the years here. My little brother currently lives there. The ratio is 0.9 women for every one man, right? So a little bit less than optimal. And Scottsdale tend to have more men, especially in the younger age groups, due to the strong presence of tech, construction, and the engineering industries. For day game, I'm going to give Scottsdale 3.5 out of 5. It's got some great shopping areas, outdoor malls, lots of girls hanging out. But it's only a matter of time until you start seeing the same girls if you're doing a ton of day game. So not the best option ever, but not bad. For night game, Scottsdale has a surprisingly active nightlife with plenty of high-end bars, clubs, and lounges. The city party is pretty hard, so you can always find plenty of girls, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 for that. For online dating, 3 out of 5, similar to San Diego, maybe slightly worse due to the slightly worse ratio, and the ratio plays the biggest factor when you're engaged in online dating. That's just all there is to it. For social circle, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. You can really do some solid damage with social circle building here because it's not a super transit city. You know, people stay there, they move there, they stay there, and um, cool groups can be hard to find for girls since most guys are quicker to settle down. So you can present a really good option if you can set up a social circle there. For local competition, I'm going to give it a three out of five. It's got a lot of good looking fit guys, but the competition isn't as cutthroat as Miami or New York. And the fashion in Scottsdale is have a six pack. So <laughs> the fashion is, is not top notch. If you're in good shape, that is your, your fashion. Um, so, you know, that goes a lot further than somewhere like New York, for example. For cost of living, I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5. Scottsdale is more expensive than the rest of Arizona, but cheaper um, than the other big metropolitan areas in the U.S. And for femininity of women, 4 out of 5. Scottsdale attracts beautiful, well-maintained women who are often fitness-focused and quite feminine. If you like blondes, go to Scottsdale. <laughs> Coming in at number 4 on the list is Austin, Texas. And Austin is one of the fastest growing cities for singles, thanks to its booming tech scene and laid back lifestyle. The ratio of single women to men is around 0.95 women to every one man. So, you know, pretty close to one-on-one. 
uh, and it's got a slightly higher number of men driven by its tech industry and influx of male professionals. For day game, four out of five. Austin has a great downtown feel. It's got amazing networks of parks and running paths. Also, highly trafficked pedestrian areas on South Congress and in you know downtown and around UT Austin makes for solid day game. It's not super spread out. It's flat. You can take scooters to get from place to place. Not that I recommend day gaming on scooters. <laughs> it's just you know easy to get around there. It's just a great place to to actually do that sort of approaching. So four out of five for day game there. For night game, I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. If you're into live music, it's legendary. Uh, The nightlife options are growing there. West 6th has tons of bars, as does Dirty 6th, as does Congress. There's always a party going on. In terms of social circle, 4.5 out of 5. I've helped two clients who currently live in Austin build a really epic social circle there, and their access is now insane. I'm actually hosting an event for my community here in November with their help and i have another client who is heavily entrenched in the texas two-step dance scene and uh the ratio is even better so he absolutely cleans up in this uh type of dancing that's for sure it's a very physical type of dancing where you're you know it's like swing dancing mixed with country and you're spinning girls around and opportunity looks super masculine if you can dance it's one of the greatest uh game hacks there is so In terms of local competition, I'm going to give Austin three out of five. It's got a lot of young professionals, but it's not as intense as like New York or Miami. For the cost of living, 3.5 out of five. It's getting more expensive as it grows. It's still more affordable than many major U.S. cities. Also, there's no state taxes, so that's a big plus. And for femininity women, 3.5 out of five. Uh, Women are down to earth. They're stylish, but the vibe in Austin is more casual compared to other cities. So before we get into number three, I'm going to take a quick little pick-me-up here. I'm going to have a shot of this Magic Mind. I'm going to shake it up first. This stuff is really great. I've been drinking it for about a year. Mm. They're sponsoring the show now, which is awesome because I love this stuff. Um, Joe Rogan had it on his podcast. The Kardashians are drinking it. Forbes even called it Silicon Valley's new morning elixir. And it's the world's first mental performance shot. It's your secret to a sharper mind, lower stress, and calm energy. And it's really the first tried and true patented solution for mental performance. This stuff has some awesome ingredients. It's got lion's mane, bacopa cognizin, ashwagandha, L-theanine, turmeric, radiola, cardioceps, and matcha. And for calm energy, vitamins B2, B3, B12, C, and D for vitality. I drink one every morning. Good stuff. Really recommend it. And it's made locally here in Venice. So good with your coffee, good coffee alternative. And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen these around. They sell them in most good coffee shops as well. So coming in at number three on the list and uh, the third best city for single men is Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas may seem like a party city only, but it's more than just the strip when it comes to dating lifestyle. The ratio of single women to men is 0.97 women to every one man. This is, again, U.S. Census data. This isn't just me making it up, right? Las Vegas is a fairly balanced ratio, though in the hospitality and entertainment sectors, you may find more single women. And if your game is really good, you'll do amazing in Vegas. But if your game is weak, you will not be happy here. Do not go to Vegas if your game is weak. (laughs) It's a good city if you're good. It's really bad if you're bad. And I've spent countless weekends in Vegas in my semi-professional poker player days after college. Even lived there for two separate months in 2008 and 2016. For day game, bad. Two out of five. Vegas sucks for day game because the only place to go are either the malls, um, and sort of the, the shopping areas on the strip, like the Caesars Forum shops or Venetian shops. And yeah, that's just not, it's not even like day game. You know, the energy on the strip is quite high. So it's more like night game during the day. And it always feels like it's either really hot or really cold there. So, you know, luckily you're indoors most of the years and this doesn't fa- fare very well for day game. Of course, there's beautiful days, but maybe I don't remember those because I was probably uh, drunk. Uh, I was very nocturnal when I was there. Uh, So for online dating, I don't know, one out of five. I wouldn't really waste a ton of time using online dating in Vegas. I have a client who lives there and he has no such luck, even though his profile is very good, optimized. You know, all the hotties know everyone and they don't really waste their time with online dating. So only mega chads should dabble with online dating in Vegas. For night game, five out of five. You know, Vegas has the best nightlife in the U.S. hands down. 
Uh, if you're a random tourist, right? If you just go to Vegas and you're looking for a night, I mean, that, that's the city, right? It's Sin City for a reason. It's not just the bars and clubs. They've got shows, the casinos. The options are endless for going out at night. And if you're a local and you have hookups, it's even better. It's a big city, but a small inner scene. So it's very easy to get to know people. For Social Circle, really good. 4.5 out of 5. For the same reasons I stated, the social circle will be highly built around the hospitality and nightlife industries. And if you're into party girls and casual dating, casual sex, Vegas is your place. <laughs> if you're interested in long-term relationships, don't move here. <laughs> because uh, unless you wipe a girl up or buy a house in Summerlin and you want to make some babies, like being being in Vegas is, uh, is great for short term. But long term, yeah, I don't see that as a great option to live unless you go off the strip. For local competition, two out of five. You know, the dudes who live in Vegas are a force to be reckoned with, but the competition for one night stands on the strip, if you're willing to bang a six, isn't that tough? So again, if you're really good, you'll get really good results. If not, you'll have a lot of close calls in Vegas and, uh, you know, you'll go home thinking, uh, I should have stayed for shorter. So, for a cost of living, four out of five. Vegas is very affordable and in many areas you can find great deals. Living near the Strip can drive prices up a little bit, but due to the no state income tax, it's a great deal wherever you are. Femininity of women, four out of five. The women in Vegas tend to be beautiful. You'll meet more tourists than locals in the nightlife scene. Well, it depends on where you go, of course. But the girls dress to impress because it's Vegas, baby, right? Fewer fatties in Vegas for sure. Um, so next up on the list is Miami, Florida and the surrounding metro area. I'm including Fort Lauderdale, even north to Del Rey, Boca Raton. Uh, all that whole South Florida area is great. So whether you're looking to meet beautiful women, enjoy the city that never stops partying, Miami's got you covered. And according to U.S. Census data, the ratio of single women to men is about 1.1 women for every woman, for every one man, or 1.1 women, I guess. <laughs> Multiple women, 1.1 of them. Uh, so that's better, a better than one-to-one -one ratio. Miami attracts a large number of women, especially in the modeling, hospitality, entertainment industries, which skew the ratio slightly towards those more single women. And I spent two months living in Miami in the winter of 2015 and spent tons of time in Boca Raton and Fort Lauderdale. Growing up, I have family there. For day game, three out of five, not great uh, for day game area because it's primarily a drive around sort of area. You can day game in the pedestrians area or the beach, but it's not a great option if that's your preferred hunting strategy. None of the places in the U.S. except for number one on the list are good for, for day game. Europe is good for day game. <laughs> uh, in terms of night game, five out of five. Miami's nightclub is world class. You've got the iconic clubs like Live and Story, plus plenty of rooftop bars, lounges to keep you entertained. Also up in Del Rey and Lauderdale have a really awesome nightlife vibe. Online dating, four out of five. Solid. You know, girls are motivated to meet guys online and the ratio certainly helps. For social circle, I'm going to give it a four out of five. It's a little more transient than New York City, for example, so you have quite a bit of churn with girls moving away. In terms of local competition, 2.5 out of 5. Miami is full of high-status guys, and women's douchebag radar isn't as honed as it is in other places, so you've got more competition from Billy Biceps and other you know, douchey scumbags, but if you stand out, you can do really well there. For cost of living, 3 out of 5. It's getting pricier every year, especially in places like Brickell or South Beach, but there are still affordable areas uh, that you can find great deals on that are being gentrified. Femininity of women, five out of five. Miami is known for its abundance of beautiful and feminine women, many of whom are from Latin America. They tend to be fashion forward. They take great cr pride in their appearance. And uh, they call the capital of South America, Miami, <laughs> for a reason. We'll get back to the show in a second. But before we do, I have a quick request. If you've ever gotten any value from this podcast and you want this show to continue to grow, then I invite you to leave us a rating and review on Apple or Spotify. These reviews really go a long way to help us attract better podcasters and bigger guests. So if you're feeling up to it, we'd love to see a rating and a review from you. And if you share that rating with me and you recommend the podcast to just one wingman or buddy and you send me a screenshot of that recommendation, I'll I'll send you a secret bonus workshop. All right, back to the show. So for the best city for single men in the U.S., you guessed it, number one, New York City. The most iconic city in the world, a mecca for single men. But let's look at how it stacks up in terms of dating lifestyle. So I lived here full time from 2012 to 2014, and I spent about half the year there between 2014 and 2018 and loved every second of it. When I wasn't in New York City, I was in Europe during the summer 
or LA or San Diego when it got cold. Uh, I would spend spring and fall in New York City because it's just paradise there the time of year. And after living in New York City for about a year, I had a rotation of 10 girls I met through day game and becoming a regular at a few of the best bars. And uh, my favorite at the time was a bar in the West Village called Employees Only. They opened a branch also uh, in L.A. And um, we'd go there, no joke, four to five nights a week. We knew all the staff. The place was always a gold mine for meeting cute girls. Tinder became popular right when I moved here. And I also got a ton of dates on it as well. But the quality just couldn't compete with the girls I was meeting in real life. And at one point, my wingman challenged me to go on 30 first dates in 30 days. And uh, we were documenting the whole thing and trying to make some content out of it. Ended up losing the content, so we never made anything out of it. But I ended up winning the challenge. The total tally was 45 total dates, if we include second and third dates, in those 30 days. And that's how I built that rotation of 10 girls. So the reason NYC is so good, it's simply the ratio of single women to men. You know, based on the sense of data, there are roughly 1.2 women for every one man. And New York tends to have more single women than men, especially in certain neighborhoods like Manhattan and Brooklyn. So, you know, why is any city better than <laughs> another one? It's typically just the ratio, supply and demand. For day game, five out of five. It's the best day game city, I think, in the world, simply due to foot traffic. And like I said before, I quit using online dating because every time I left my apartment in Eden Square, I could meet a handful of women simply walking to and from the grocery store, you know, on the subway and the metro. I had my best four-legged friend, Wiley, <laughs> with me, and that made it way easier. Uh, my, my beloved wing dog, who's no longer with us anymore. Um, but having a dog in New York City, dog parks, I picked up many, <laughs> many girls at the dog park. Uh, for night game, I'm going to give it five out of five. New York's nightlife is unmatched. Endless options, whether you're in rooftop bars, clubs, exclusive speakeasies, there's always something going on. For online dating, five out of five. Again, the ratio. You know, lots of single bored women trying to get out of their shoebox apartment, super eager to go on dates. No one wants to spend a night stuck in their apartment. You want to go out in New York City, a city that never sleeps. Social circle, five out of five. Obvious reasons. If you can't make it there, as they say, or if you can make it there, you'll make it anywhere. In 2014, my wingman and I brokered a deal with some young and hungry promoters who knew tons of models in New York City. And the business model for these promoters is they would get paid by the clubs 50 to 100 bucks for every girl they brought. And these were clubs at, at the time, 1-0, Catch, Bagatelle, Lavo. And depending on the night, um, it was good that week. They always had the problem. Depending on which night, you know, that's how they would choose which club to go to. Obviously, 1-0 was typically good on like was Mondays or Tuesdays and again on Saturdays. But um, they had a problem. And the problem was wrangling girls to show up on time or even show up at all to the clubs, right? Beautiful girls are flaky, especially the ones in the party scene. So their solution to the problem of getting women to come to the clubs so they can get paid was to offer free housing to these models in exchange for attendance to the clubs. And that way they could shuttle them much more efficiently. And uh, the promoters had one of these model houses, we called them Mohos for short, uh, but they needed more. And we had a couple of apartments we were renting on Airbnb. So we made a deal with them. We gave them two of those Airbnb spots in exchange. Uh, they paid us rent and they also gave us access to their free bottle service tables that were you know, frequented by one or two of guy promoters and typically eight to 12 of the models. Uh, we also helped them open Mohos in LA and Miami. And this experience is really what transformed my game from good to great. As you can imagine, my access to the hottest women was now unparalleled, right? I could just show up any night of the week and be in the presence of all those beautiful girls. And I did terrible at first. I didn't know how to uh, communicate with them. Uh, I'd studied too much pickup stuff and did a bunch of cringy game stuff, but didn't work. And then over time and lots of failed attempts, I kind of got the hang of it and figured out how those women responded to men. Um, the only place where I had it better is when I lived in Kiev, Ukraine from 2018 to 2022. And that was obviously a function of all the stuff I learned and just my ability to set up a social circle and leverage a lot of these social skills that I teach. Um, if you want to know more about that, watch the other episodes where I talk about the best seven international cities. Um, and Kiev is still on that list, even though the war is going on. I thought it's still number seven on the list. Obviously, it was number one before the war. In terms of local competition, New York, three out of five. Plenty of competition here as New York is packed with ambitious, successful men, but very few have good game. 
And, you know, you got the finance bros who mainly bang the sixes, the artsy fartsy guys who do the same. Lots of older sugar daddy provider types operating here. You know, everyone in New York City has money because it's way too expensive for anyone who doesn't. But most guys make the mistake of thinking that having money is a substitute for good game, and it's not. The amount of girls in New York City who would consistently tell me how douchey and cringy most of the guys they met were was the highest of anywhere I've lived. So if you've got game and it's on point, this city rewards confidence and the hustle. For cost of living, this is the downside, one out of five. New York City is one of the most expensive cities in the world. Rent, dining out, general expenses are really through the roof. In terms of femininity women, uh, 3.5 out of 5. You know, women in New York City tend to be highly career-driven, which can make them less traditional in their feminine energy. But the city's diversity means you can meet women from all walks of life, tons of women from abroad. So that wraps up the best U.S. cities for single men in 2024. Whether you're looking for a vibrant nightlife, a beach lifestyle, or somewhere a little more low-key, these cities really have it all. And remember, the key to success is always understanding the local culture and adapting your approach accordingly. For more personalized advice, join me in the Interconference community and connect with other like-minded guys. We got them in all these cities and a lot in Europe and, and globally. So thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep leveling up. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you're a regular listener and you're digging our content, do me a favor, leave us a five-star review. It's how other people learn about the show and how we can spread the word. If you don't feel like it's worthy of five stars, just go ahead, don't leave any review at all. And I want to let you know that we've opened up a few slots in our exclusive community. We're accepting applications to join our select group of men and experience the radical power of accountability, step up your game, cross everything off your sexual bucket list, and become a beast at accomplishing all of your goals. To learn more and apply, go to innerconfidence.com com slash community.